Good day, everyone. I'm Advait, and I would like to talk to you about calculus. What is calculus? What does it mean? And why are so many high schoolers afraid of it? Is there a better way to teach calculus? Quite a long time ago, two famous scientists, Richard Feynman and Herman Woke, had a conversation. So Feynman asked Woke if he knew calculus, and Woke admitted that he didn't. Feynman then said to Woke that he better learn calculus, as it was the language that God talks. What is this language that God talks, and why are so many high schoolers afraid of it? In simple terms, calculus is just the study of anything that changes. The word calculus actually means small pebble in Latin. Quite a long time ago, small pebbles were used to perform mathematical calculations. The word calculus is actually just an abbreviation. The full form is infinitesimal calculus, and the word infinitesimal means infinitely small. I would like you to think for a minute about how we can visualize this. One way to do it would be to draw a line like this. And what it can do is cut it in half, cut it in half again, and do it a couple more times. You can see over here that now we have 1 64th of a line. So what if you continue? What if you keep doing this forever? What would 1 over infinity be? I can't really tell you what 1 over infinity is, but I can tell you what happens as you get closer and closer to it. As you would have already noticed, the length of the line kept getting shorter and shorter. The length kept approaching 0, but it never actually reached 0. In other words, 0 was the limit. Well, the mathematical way of representing this would be this way. But in simpler terms, a limit is simply a value that a function approaches, but never actually reaches. I have noticed and observed that many high school students, all of my classmates, and most of them at least, memorize calculus as a set of rules. What I've noticed that memorizing rules can be very boring, and simply memorizing rules without understanding their purpose is a big mistake. So how can we teach calculus using a different method, using visual representation, such as graphs, plotting functions on the simple Cartesian plane? So I'd like to take you through a demonstration of the two basic fundamental concepts that calculus is built on differentiation and integration. So I'd like to start off with differentiation. So over here, I have a simple line. And to find the slope of the line, it's a very simple and straightforward process. Take any two points, calculate the change in y, and divide it by the change in x. And this value remains constant no matter which two points you take. But when you get to curves, things change a little bit. The slope keeps changing. So how can we find the value of a slope at any given point? Well, I'd like you to think about what happens as you zoom in to the graph. You can see that the line is slightly straighter than what it was before. And the more you zoom in, the straighter the line gets. And the easier it is to calculate the value of the slope. And the straighter the line gets, the more accurate your value of the slope becomes. Well, it will never be perfect because the line is still curved to a certain extent. But if you keep doing it forever, it will become more and more accurate. Mathematically, this is represented as dy by dx. And the mathematical term for this would be the derivative. Now, I would like to talk about the reverse process of this. So this is what differentiation is all about, cutting something into an infinite amount of infinitely small parts. So what happens when you take those infinitely small parts and put them back together as a whole? This is what integration is all about. One problem that many high schoolers have faced is to calculate the area under the curve. And trust me, I have got this problem in many exams so many times. I would like to take you through a quick demonstration of how integration actually works. Over here, we have a set of rectangles. And this can be used to approximate the area under this curve. It's not really accurate but it is a decent estimation. But what would happen if we used more rectangles and made them thinner? We would have a slightly better way of approximating the area under the curve. 
what would happen if we kept doing this forever? The thinner the rectangles get, the more accurate your result becomes. Integration is finding the area under a curve of an infinite amount of infinitely thin rectangles. So this is something that really irks me. Many of my classmates and friends and many high school students in general never really bother to understand this. All they do is use the formula or the rule that they have learned, calculate the answer, find the result, move on without even thinking about it and without even understanding the purpose of why they're using that rule. And one reason could be because they don't understand how useful it is. Many people think that calculus is useless. I've heard from many friends and family that calculus is just useless and I'm not really gonna use it ever. Is calculus even used in the real world, you might ask? And the answer is of course. Well, a simple area where, a simple subject we can think about would be physics, where calculus plays a big part. If you think about how any object moves over a certain period of time, you can graph it on a simple distance time graph, which many students learn in their physics class. Using calculus, you can figure out the rate of change of distance at any moment, or in simpler words, the speed of the object. In chemistry, the rate at which two substances react can be plotted as a function on a graph as well. And using calculus, you can figure out the rate of reaction at any given moment whether it's a moving car, any moving object, whether it's a bacteria that multiplies, anything can be plotted on a graph. If you sit and think about it for a while, you would realize that anything that changes over time can be plotted on a simple graph on the Cartesian plane. Even in everyday situations, like for example, if you think about it, you can even plot the rate at which a broken faucet leaks. So the next time you think, is calculus even useful? I would like you to remember that the next time you have a leaky faucet, you can use calculus to figure out how long your water will last. Thank you very much.